Hello DP Review TV, this is Don Komarechka here, uh, wearing my lab coat and a mad scientist layer. We are going to make some crystals on either microscope slides, or if you don't have that, just a piece of glass from a picture frame will work just fine for you. The idea here is that the crystals that we are about to create from household ingredients create vibrant, colorful, abstract artwork as a result of cross-polarization. Now we're going to mix up some citric acid. Um, typically for this mixture, I'll take some isopropyl rubbing alcohol. This is 70%. We want our final mixture to be about 50% alcohol to 50% water. So you'll notice that I didn't actually measure anything because it's not an exact science. Um, if you put in too much citric acid, it won't dissolve properly over maybe about 10 to 15 minutes and some will still stay at, stay at the bottom. That's fine, you will have a fully saturated solution. If it does all dissolve, you can add more until that saturation hits its critical point and then you know that when things start to evaporate, your crystals will start to form right away. Beta alanine creates something almost like architecture type structure. It's really neat when you see it. The sulfamic acid creates a hexagonal type of structure, almost like a snowflake, but in elongated hexagons. This is tartaric acid um, made with a solution of water and methanol. Tartaric acid creates uh, very long triangular shapes, which are similar to the architectural shapes of the beta alanine, uh, but different in their own right. My personal favorite is citric acid. It creates sprawling interlacing crystals that can almost look like waves or stars. And uh, citric acid is also something that you can melt directly on the slide. Now, citric acid melts at around 153 degrees Celsius, so it doesn't take a whole lot with a hot plate to get it to that point where it will start to melt, and uh, it will crystallize a lot faster and in a different way than through evaporation. So now we wait and see what happens by the morning. Are you just going to watch that all night? I will be here all night watching these things. They're like my children. Good morning. We have crystals. Now, typically the thinner they are, the more they will have the effect that we're after when we place them into the polarizers. Um, so in this case, we've got uh, some really thick, some really thin. The uh, beta alanine that I put down is actually quite thick. You could, if you were to look at a cross section of this slide, uh, it is too thick to produce anything terribly useful, but some of them turned out to be quite nice. When we put them uh, in a cross polarized light source, it turns into something that will create abstract, beautiful, and quite colorful artwork. So here here we have a makeshift polarizing microscope. It's using some fairly complex things, but when you break it down into the individual components, it's really easy to put something like this together. Uh, at first, we have a light source, which is just a simple LED flashlight. Up from that, we have a polarizing filter. The light has to be cross-polarized. So you have one polarizer uh, in front of the light source, and then you have another polarizer on the other side of the subject in opposition. Now, normally when you put polarizers in opposition to each other, you would end up with a black image, unless there's something in between that mucks up with the polarization of light, then you will see some colors coming through. But we also have to have significant magnification. And in this case, we're going to be using a microscope objective. Uh, this is a Michutoyo 10 times microscope objective. They're probably the best. Uh, it is on a tube lens from NovoFlex that allows the microscope objective to be attached to a camera very easily. Any 200 millimeter uh, focal length lens will function as a tube lens in this case. So you don't have to get fancy. You might already have the gear to do this and you just need a step down adapter from whatever your lens is down to 26 millimeters. That attaches to the camera and uh, we have that on a focusing rail. This is an automated focusing rail also from NovoFlex, the Castell Micro, which has a really fine tuned adjustment for me to dial in exactly where that focus should be on our subject. Once we have it in focus, the magic begins. The real trick is to find something worth photographing within the, uh, the constructs of the crystals. Now, every time you make these crystals, the patterns are gonna be different. Uh, whether you're using a different material or even the same material, there's no repetition in what you're going to find. So what you choose to put in the frame uh, or leave out of the frame becomes your abstract artwork and you get to choose what lines, shapes, and colors are going to be the most pleasing for your final image.
While the components here are simple, and you can see the order in which they're placed, it does look intimidating. So how can we boil this down to the simplest possible components to get the same results with a lot less gear? We have the same LED flashlight, but we have sort of a, a microscope slide sandwich with a polarizing filter on either side of it right here. Uh, I've got a Lumix GX9 and a Liowa 25 millimeter 2.5 to 5 times magnification macro lens, which on a crop sensor camera will give me the equivalent of that 10 times microscope objective that we had with the more impressive setup. But the results here will be very comparable. Would it be ideal to be on a tripod? Sure, absolutely. But in order to keep things as simple as possible, let's try this handheld. So I'm holding the end of the lens with my left hand, and that hand is also resting on this little microscope stand. Uh, it's not gonna be perfect, and I'm gonna be shooting continuously, hoping that I get one frame that has focus exactly where I want it. Again, you move the camera around until you find an interesting subject. It's all randomness, and you're trying to control the chaos. So that's how we can make a subject from nothing using polarized light. Uh, thanks for watching this video. You can find more of my mad scientist antics uh, where I am on social media, on Twitter, on Instagram, and on my podcast at photogeekweekly.com. Don't forget to subscribe to, uh, to DP Review TV. We've got all sorts of fun videos, not only about camera gear, but this is an ongoing series as well. So tune in and uh, looking forward to seeing your feedback in the comments. So here we have some polarizing film, uh, a sheet of it that I've cut down into some smaller pieces. And when you put polarizers in opposition to each other, uh, they will become very dark. It's what we were experimenting with in this entire video. However, what happens when you put a third piece on a 45 degree angle to the other two? things actually get brighter instead of getting darker or staying as dark as they were before. Why is this happening? Tell us in the comments. <laughs>